Now, by using cutting-edge AI algorithms, the technology sorts through all the images that are captured, and that's where volunteers like you and me come in. Now, they're asking for home-based volunteers, known as spotters, to look through the images and note down which species they see. There's training available, and it allows experts to figure out how we can boost our hedgehog population. It's a great story, this. Joining me now is uh, Martin Malin, who's the founder of Hornbeam Wood Hedgehog Sanctuary in Harpenden. Martin, very good afternoon to to you. Uh, hello, Roberta. Thanks for the invitation to join Great, you. great pleasure. Nice to be on the show. Can I just ask you to, to, to look at all the species? Well, how many species of hedgehogs are there? Well, around the world, there's lots. We don't know exactly, but at least 17 different species around the world. But the species we have in this country are British hedgehogs or European hedgehogs. Just, and not just those the British and European? It's one of the same thing. So really? British hedgehog or European, you can call them either. Let's not get political. Because I just Googled this, and there's the desert hedgehog, the northern white-breasted hedgehog, Brant's hedgehog, the Somali hedgehog. I didn't know there were so many. Yeah, there are a lot. And they all do look like hedgehogs with spines on their bodies. The ears are slightly bigger than others. The, the texture of their, their skin and the colour of their skin and the fur is different. But uh, in this country, the, the traditional hedgehog is a cream and browns, of course, which blends into the natural habitats woodlands and uh, where leaves have fallen and start to rot the grounds uh, or hedgerows. Martin, what do you make of the scheme that's launching today? Well, it's hot off the press. I mean, I've just found out about it today, to be honest with you. Um, so I actually tried it out. And um, what it is, so there is there are estimates on, on the populations of hedgehogs in this country. Um, and based on previous reports, over the past decade, there's about a 70% decline in rural locations and a 50% decline in urban locations. But they're very okay in urban locations, but it's not an exact figure. So this uh, pilot project, which has been um, done by the British Hedgehog Preservation Society and the People's Trust for Endangered Species, along with their partners, um, they've been setting up these cameras in strategic locations throughout the country. Uh, and then these cameras will obviously take snapshots of hopefully hedgehogs that pass by, um, which will then be uploaded to a website called mammalweb.org. Um, and then once they're up there, the members of the public can then log into this website look at the photos there'll, be, there'll probably be one or two photographs of the same spot and they distinguish whether it is a hedgehog or not and they can also say whether it's a male or female what sex it is and also if it's a, a juvenile a teenage hedgehog or an adult hedgehog and they can pinpoint um particular location in the uk where they want to focus on as so the idea being that there's a picture uh, a more accurate picture that will give a better estimate about the right. population of the hedgehogs now, you're, you're an expert in this, so when you say you can age a hedgehog, surely a smaller one is younger, a big fat one a bit older. <laughs> but generally speaking, yes. And then they've got baby hoglets as well, and they're, they're tiny, you know, not even an yeah. inch in size. Right. Martin, baby hedgehogs are the cutest thing you've ever seen in the world. I mean, how, how, can, they make, how can they be so cute? Well, it's, it's, they're bizarre. So when, you've, so when they're first born, obviously they don't have spines when they're first born. But after a few days, the spine, spines will come, start coming through the body. And initially, they're, they're, they're black and white, the spines. So, and over time, they change into the creams that you sort of generally associate with hedgehogs. But um, just like a lot of mammals, when they are born, their eyes are closed, their ears are closed. They can't see or hear anything. They're completely vulnerable. They need the mother for the heat, basically. Um, and we rescue hedgehogs. That's what we do. Um, so often people, unfortunately uh, will want to disturb a hedgehog if they see a nest there and in doing so unfortunately the mother will run away so often we have to rescue um, baby orphaned hoglets which is not the best thing they're much better with a mum and then we put them into incubators and we look after them and it's actually right now the season spring starting through summer where most of the hedgehogs will be born okay so a baby hedgehog is known as a hoglet yes Every day is a school day. It's incredible. Different news there. So if disturbed, the net, the mother just runs away. They runs, scuttles away. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, it's not. They're not the best of mums. Unfortunately, um, and what happens when they get scared? They'll they'll leave the nest, and um, often they won't return. And the problem is, if they're not rescued straight away, at least within twenty four hours, they end up dying because of the cold. The mum pr- provides heat to the hoglets. So it's vitally important that they are rescued if they, they are uh, hoglets that have been orphaned and the mothers left. Well, why is it so important to boost and protect our hedgehog population, Martin? 
So uh, there are indicator species for wildlife in general. So um, they're on the on they are vulnerable to extinction at the moment. So their populations have been dramatically falling, and it gives you an idea, a general idea of how wildlife in general is doing throughout the UK. So to better understand why they are their populations are. De- decreasing and where is is quite a huge thing so this particular project they're doing it will provide valuable information going forward and in terms of we've spoken about this i mean that as a nation we've been deep in con- con- conversation for years the decline in hedgehog numbers has been profound but why is that so it, there's, there's a loads of factors so from from our perspective we rescue the hedgehogs we see the issues they face locally um unfortunately there's uh, their spines are, are there to protect them, but unfortunately in this day and age, lots of things are getting tangled and trapped on their spines, particularly plastics, rubbish, badminton nettings. Um, even so far as if, if rubbish is left out in bags, like commercial rubbish, we have rescued hedgehogs that had goo or gunk all over them that has been going through the rubbish bags. So they themselves are, are unfortunately, um, the spines are, are actually now not, not a good thing for them. But generally sp- speaking, they were there to protect them. But often they'll fall into high holes as well so if they're doing road works and things like that they'll fall into the, 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 the holes in the road works they'll fall into ponds which they can't get out of end up drowning there and often they'll get tangled in just uh, football netting badminton netting things like that so there's a lot of things that are affecting them but the, the biggest thing is habitat loss in general so in the rural locations particularly um, given their name hedgehog they love hedges and a lot of hedgehogs have been disappearing or not being maintained as hedges so they've lost a lot of habitats but they are faring better in uh, in the urban areas in gardens. So people are realising the best thing you can do to help a hedgehog really in your garden is just to cut, have a small hole in your fence or wall, 13 centimetres is all you need. And that will uh, ensure hedgehogs get into your gardens, which tend to be a very safe place for them. I haven't seen a hedgehog for years, Martin. They're beautiful. They're lovely little creatures. Look, your sanctuary, how do you help hedgehogs? So uh, we've been operating for about 10 years now and we rescue hedgehogs in the local area, Hertfordshire. So we're based in Harpenden. Um, we have a little rescue car. We get phone calls from people that found a hedgehog, usually in precarious situations, often in dangerous places like roads. Um, and usually during the day, which is a bad sign. We'll go out and rescue the hedgehogs. We'll bring them back to the sanctuary. We've got a little hospital there. Depending on what's wrong with them, we can't operate on hedgehogs. We have vets that help us. But often we will get leg injuries. Um, A lot of hedgehogs become emaciated or dehydrated, so we fix that. And we give them antibiotics and painkillers when they need them as well. And then after rehabilitation, they get released back into the wild, which can be anywhere from a week to six weeks or something like that. And then they go back to the local areas they came from. So we're, we're essentially helping hedgehogs that would otherwise more than likely have, um, have passed on. So we're giving them a, a good chance locally back into the wild. Martin, great pleasure speaking with you. Carry on doing the amazing work you are. Martin Malin, founder of the Hornbeam Wood Hedgehog Sanctuary in Harper.